Hello and welcome back everyone. So in the previous lecture we have discussed the basic endodontic anatomy and today we will be starting a new topic that is the microbiology of the pulp specifically the infectious microorganism of the pulp that cause necrosis and infection of the pulp. In today's lecture we will be talking about how the pulp defends itself from bacteria and how the bacteria eventually reach the pulp to establish an infection. So the bacteria are constantly present in our oral cavity all the time but still our teeth and the pulp are very well protected from infection. Why is that? So as we know that the pulp is a living tissue inside the tooth. It has blood vessels, nerves through which the tooth gets its nutrients and remains vital. And this vitality of the pulp is very important in order to prevent bacterial invasion to the pulp. Let me explain why this vitality is important in order to prevent or slow the bacterial invasion to the pulp. So under normal circumstances, dentine and the pulp are completely sterile and isolated from oral microorganisms because dentine has a layer of enamel above it which keeps the dentine protected at all times. Even if for some reason the dentine does get exposed spontaneously because of maybe sometimes caries or tooth preparation or something else but the pulp still remains vital, then the pulpal infection is unlikely until and unless dentinal thickness is reduced considerably. Because in vital pulp, the outward movement of dentinal fluid within the dentinal tubules and its contents delay the intratubular invasion of bacteria. And even when there is a carious lesion on the dentine and the pulp is still vital, other factors such as dentinal sclerosis beneath the lesion, tertiary dentine formation in response to carious lesion, accumulation of antibodies that results in pulpal inflammation, all of these factors limit and impede the bacterial invasion to the pulp via tubules. So even if a tooth is carious, bacterial invasion to the pulp and pulpal necrosis takes a very long time to develop. So this is how the vital pulp defends itself against normal bacterial attack. Vitality and inflammation of the pulp depends on the remaining dentinal thickness because the remaining dentinal thickness or commonly known as the RDT is a very important factor in protecting the pulp. So pulp has a lot of ways to defend itself. But even after all this, there are certain ways which can cause a breach all the way through the dentine and the bacteria can gain access to the vital pulp. Once bacteria gain access to the pulp, they can easily divide and multiply because of the rich nutritious environment of the pulp. Because of a heavy bacterial attack, the pulp undergoes necrosis, after which bacteria are free to divide and establish an infection in the root canal system. So up till now you must have understood that in order for the bacteria to establish an infection in the root canal system, the bacteria must first gain access to the vital pulp. After which the pulp will undergo necrosis. After the pulp has undergone necrosis, the bacteria can divide freely because they are no longer being inhibited by the host defenses and so they establish an infection. So it must be clear up till now that pulpal exposure as well as pulpal necrosis are two very important factors for the infection of pulp or the root canal system. In some infectious cases, however, these two factors may not always be present simultaneously like infection in an RCD treated tooth in which infection develops after the pulp has been removed, so there is an absence of pulp. But nonetheless, in most cases, these two factors are important because vital pulp will always delay the bacterial invasion. Conditions such as trauma, caries, cracks or any other dental procedure can cause a breach in the dentine. Occasionally, congenital anomalies such as dense invaginators and evaginators and bladder grooves may also result in spontaneous pulpal exposure. So apart from caries, all others are the direct exposure of the pulp. And hence, all of these including caries are the most obvious route for infection. Caries itself is the single most common cause of pulpal exposure. Other scenarios that are discussed are more or less classified as direct mechanical routes or mechanical exposures like during any respiratory procedure or as a result of trauma and because of these direct exposures, the bacteria present in the oral cavity will gain immediate and direct access to the pulp. These type of pulpal exposures because of caries or other ways may look alike but there are some major differences between these types of exposure. Let's discuss some of the key differences between these different causes of pulpal exposure starting with of course caries. So caries is a very slow process taking months or even years to develop and reach the pulp. First bacteria in the caries attacks the enamel from there bacteria clear their path towards the dentine. Once bacteria reach the vital tissue dentine, as already discussed, vital pulp starts to limit the bacterial invasion. So the defensive mechanism of the pulp such as tertiary dentine formation, sclerosis of dentinal tubules, pulpal inflammation starts in order to prevent bacteria from gaining access to the pulp. 
but these defensive mechanism can only slow down the progress of bacteria so in a long standing carious lesion if no professional intervention is employed bacteria will eventually get past the dentine and gain access to the pulp but even before reaching the pulp inflammation of the pulp goes from mild to moderate to severe for those of you who don't know inflammation of the pulp is known as pulpitis and mild pulpitis starts very early in a carious lesion eventually going from moderate to severe pulpitis nevertheless if ignored for a long time the bacteria will reach inside the vital pulp and once bacteria are inside the pulpal death is inevitable so hence pulp in the case of caries is already exposed to few bacteria that somehow gain access to the pulp and therefore as already stated pulpal inflammation or pulpitis has already begun long before pulpal exposure to the caries Sometimes the pulp may even exhibit abscess formation depending upon the severity of the carious lesion. On the other hand, in the cases of direct pulpal exposure such as during any kind of trauma or during a professional intervention by a dentist, the exposure of the pulp to the outside environment is more or less spontaneous and doesn't have a long standing lesion associated with it as was in the case of caries. Therefore, only a few bacteria gain access to the pulp. and hence pulpal reaction to the two types of exposure either from caries or from direct mechanical exposure is widely different pulp in some of these direct exposure cases can even be saved even after spontaneous exposure to the pulp with the help of techniques such as direct pulp capping pulpectomy the vitality of the pulp can still be preserved in some of the cases of direct mechanical exposure Nevertheless most of the time especially with a carious lesion exposed pulp will eventually undergo necrosis because the bacteria now have gained access to the pulp this necrosed pulp will later on become infected this entire process however takes time and is usually a relatively slow process so apart from common exposure of the pulp that are already discussed above there are also some indirect exposure of the pulp though these are very rare the pulp also may get infected because of a periodontal disease in these cases bacteria can reach the pulp from lateral canals or tubules but as already mentioned as long as the pulp is vital outward movement of dentinal fluid is enough to keep bacteria harms away from the pulp pulpal necrosis as a result of periodontal disease only develops if the periodontal pocket reaches the apical foramen If you don't know what a periodontal pocket is, the periodontal pocket is literally a pocket or a gap between the tooth and the gingiva, which is formed as a result of a long-standing periodontal condition such as a periodontitis. If periodontal conditions like these are constantly ignored, then the pocket will deepen, eventually reaching the apical foramen. After which, the bacteria can gain direct access to the nerves and blood vessels of the pulp, and then these bacteria can cause permanent damage to the main vessels, causing pulpal death and infection of the root canal system. Lastly there is yet another process that you should know about because it is mentioned in most of our literature and it is seen in our entire body it is known as anacheresis in which microbes are transferred from the blood or the lymph to a damaged tissue where they can establish an infection It is suggested that anacheresis might be involved in root canal infection but there is still no solid evidence to support this idea it is nevertheless important to know that this process does happen in our entire body because it is mentioned in most of our literature so you should know about this process so let's just briefly summarize today's lecture so pulp is a vital living tissue and as long as it is vital it can defend itself from bacterial attack from caries through various ways such as dentinal sclerosis tertiary dentine formation and inflammation of the pulp itself so this vitality of the pulp hence is very important to slow down the progress of bacterial invasion but there are ways through which the pulp can get exposed to the bacteria one of these ways which is also the most common cause of pulpal exposure is via caries attack once caries crosses the enamel and reaches the dentine pulpal reaction to slow down caries starts in which along with tertiary dentine formation dentinal sclerosis pulp also undergoes inflammation which is known as pulpitis pulpitis goes from mild to moderate to severe depending upon the progress of caries if this caries lesion is ignored with time this caries lesion will eventually reach the pulp once in the pulp bacteria kill the pulp and cause pulpal necrosis after which due to lack of host defenses bacteria can easily divide and multiply and establish an infection in the root canal system second scenario pulpal exposure is via direct exposure through trauma or during professional intervention by a dentist 
The pulp in this case undergoes spontaneous exposure as compared to caries where there was a long standing lesion associated before. And because of this spontaneous exposure, very few bacteria gain access to the pulp and hence the pulp is not inflamed yet. In some of these direct exposure cases, the vitality of the pulp can even be protected by various techniques. But most of the time, exposure of the pulp to external environment will eventually result in pulpal necrosis due to bacteria gaining access to the pulp. And then the bacteria can divide and multiply to establish an infection in the root canal system. So this was all for today's lecture in which we have discussed how a vital pulp defends itself from bacterial attack and how the bacteria eventually reach the pulp to establish an infection. So in my next lectures on endorotic microbiology, I'll be talking about how the bacteria establish an infection inside the root canal system, what they feed upon to establish an infection, and what are the different types of root canal infections. So until then, please take care of yourselves and your loved ones. Stay safe and goodbye.